prior to the backlash and some of the people you thought were your friends turning on you inside of ESPN, did you feel at any time that you were being silenced, that there were things that you couldn't speak up about inside of ESPN? Oh, of course. And that's what I was saying is that, it, you know, what got me here um, from what happened 22 months ago um, was the main reason. That's what all of you know about. But of course, there were things through the years. And I, listen, I'm not alone. I'm so not alone. And I know that it's it's much bigger than the company that I worked for for 16 and a half years. But can you talk about what some of those things were that you were silenced about? Um, I don't think it's worth it right now. I think that what I am talking about is um, important enough to bring up um, because these is just one of the issues that I was silenced for is, is bad enough, right? Um, the number of people, Adrian, that, that have reached out to me since I got taken off the air um, in October of 21, thousands of people that I'll never meet that live in different countries around the world who wrote and said, oh my goodness, thank you. Thank you for speaking up, whether it was about being okay, being, you know, claiming myself and, and as my identity as biracial or the, the mandates that unfortunately I, I, I had to follow through with thanking me and saying, please don't stay silent. I don't have a platform. We need you. And that's when I realized that this is okay. My story is maybe interesting for a hot minute, but it's so much bigger than me. And so I can't in good conscience with the way I was raised and my morals now, and as my, a mother of three teenagers, um, I can't stay silent. If I can help some other people not feel the way I felt for a good portion of my whole life, much less um, just the last few years, then I'm going to do it. And I'm going to risk a lot in doing so. And I have risked a lot. But yes, you mentioned my faith. I do feel like that's going to carry me through. Um, I just, the past is the past in that way as far as the years of being silenced. But for this issue, yeah, it's, it's not okay. And if we sit by and preach diversity and equity and tolerance and acceptance, and then we're silent when others are, are not being accepted, then I think that's on me. That's on you. That's on everybody watching. If we don't stand up for everybody, not just the people that we agree with. There are a lot of Americans who agree with you. You mentioned people in other countries and all around the country, but a lot of people felt your frustration, did not feel like they could speak out. The first stories that I found in responding to your story were headlines that said, Sage's story is not about the First Amendment, but there are uh, policies or laws in place in the state of Connecticut, I understand, that actually protected you. Can you speak to that? Yeah, well, I'm not a lawyer. I had incredible lawyers here in the state of Connecticut and my main attorney, Brian Friedman. Um, the lawsuit is, is a public document. Anybody can go look and read and see what the, the difference um, differences are. Um, that statute in the state of Connecticut, which focuses on employers not being able to um, punish, discipline, terminate their employees um, for speaking up, for having opinions, even if they're, and this was the case with me, um, with the mandate, if, if um, you know, I, I, I did comply. Mm -hmm. while having an opinion. So for all the legal geeks who want to go read about that, it is legitimate. This isn't there. I know that there is a difference. We all know there's a difference between um, the First Amendment and the Constitution and, you know, what what we have in this in the here in the state of Connecticut. And I'm grateful. I'm not from Connecticut. I'm grateful that this state had that. I'm sure people will look that up. One more quick question for you. I'm sure you have a quick answer. Are you courageous? Hmm. Don't make me cry. <laughs> um, I never meant to be, this is not an exercise to show how courageous I am, but I will tell you that I'm very proud of myself. Um, this little girl who was so shy, my parents used to, God, I need to take her to a doctor. I didn't talk. I was scared of my own shadow, Adrian. I was scared of my own shadow when I started at ESPN in 2007 and I've changed as a human being. And I'm proud of myself for realizing um, the importance of standing up for yourself, if not just for you, but for my family and for, frankly, millions of people who've watched me through the years who I know for a fact because they reached out to me um, that said said thank you. So um, I'm proud of myself for not continuing to live in fear and to be silent because of what I might lose. And there's been a lot lost, but I believe there's going to be even more gained by being true to myself. And I hope the biggest thing I gain is to see others um, standing up for themselves as well and, and, and for others. Sage Steele, thank you for joining us. Uh, I know you're going to start writing your next chapter. We appreciate your time this morning.
Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.